Hi friends, welcome to Manchula Tutorials. How are you all? Hope all are doing good. So, very after a long back, we are back to our legal studies. So today in this class, we will discuss about the Indian Contract Act, 1872. It is an important subject in LLB, three years along with five years also. That is law of contract. It is very easiest and simplest subject in LLB. So every student like to study this uh, subject contract. So in our daily life, we are meeting with different types of contracts. That is oral contract, or written contract, express contract, implied contract. All these contracts are going on in our daily life. Such as buying, purchasing, delivering, all these uh, terms will come under contract itself. So what is contract and what is the meaning of the contract is defined in legal studies. So for that we should get into our video that is law of contract. So in this video I am going to explain the introductory part of law of contract. So when it was came into force and what are the sections in law of contract. So actually Indian Contract Act 1872 came into force September 1st along with 22 sections, 22, 26 sections, sorry, please correct it. Indian Contract Act 1872 came into force in September 1st with 20, 266 sections, 266 sections. It was formed before the independence. It was, this act was formed in the presence of British government. So this 226 sections were divided into different countries. So in that section 1 to 75 deals with general provisions of contract section. 76 to 123 deals with sales goods contract. Section 124 to 147 deals with indemnity and guarantee. Very important terms friends. You should uh, you should always meet these terms in your complete LLB 3 years and 5 years uh, subject of civil or related to contract. So next section 148 to 181 deals with bailment and pledge. Section 182 to 238 deals with agencies. Section 239 to 266 deals with partnership. So all these 266 sections were uh, made in the presence of British government after few and rapid development in the industrial uh, accept along with that commercial accept the British government along with Indian uh, taking support with Indian government in 1930 they removed section 176 to 123 from Indian Contract Act and they made new act that is Sale of Goods Act 1930 Sale of Goods Act 1930 Similarly, along with Sale of Goods Act 1930, they have also removed Section 239 to 266 from Indian Contract Act and formed a new act that is Indian Partnership Act 1932. This is an introduction part of Indian Contract Friends. So in this you should keep in mind that when it, it came to force, it will be some uh, MCQ questions in your judicial exam services and the sale of goods act 1930 and Indian partnership act 1932. So now let us discuss one of the important maxima and important term and important question uh, what we call an important accept will come into daily life of our law student or our individual that is all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contract so this is very very important maxima which deal with and a law student should deal with this topic all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contract 
So before describing or explanation in this topic, we will get into what is the difference between agreement and contract. So what is an agreement? So an agreement is defined or it is interpreted, the interpretation of agreement is given under section 2 clause E of Indian Contract Act 1872. Offer plus acceptancy is equal to an agreement. Offer, a person who offers an object is an offerer or a promiser. The person who accepts the offer is an offeree or promisee. So, section uh, 2 clause B and 2 clause A will give a detailed interpretation of offerer and offeree. So, when both offer and accept combine, then it result to an agreement. So, now we got my point. Uh, what is an agreement? When offer and acceptancy combine, along with that, consideration is very foremost important. Term should be included in offer and acceptancy. When uh, an offer is accepted by uh, another person, that uh, offer and acceptancy both called an agreement. Then what is contract? So, contract is defined in the Indian Contract Act 1872 under Section 2 Class H. An agreement which is enforceable by law is called contract. Agreement which is enforceable by law is called contract. What is meant by enforceable by law? So the term enforceable by law, you assume that that something is enforced by law. It means the actions which are in the agreement should be enforceable by court or by justice or by judge or any term which is related to law. So, for the enforceable of law, there are some few terms which is given this uh, definition of that terms. The terms which came into action, which comes into action is known as contract. There are different terms that terms should and that terms should be in the agreement if they are or applicable if their terms are in action then the agreement is called as contract so in simple words an agreement which is enforceable by law is called contract so what are the terms you uh, the law defines so as per section 10 there are few uh, different terms that is lawful consideration as an important term if it, the term came into action then it will become the agreement became contract along with that lawful object the subject which you are taking or agreement which you are doing with two parties it should be an, in a man, manner of lawful manner so next free consent it is very very foremost important term that there should be a free consent of both parties when making an agreement. If this exists, then the agreement will called as contract. Along with that, capacity of parties is also one of the foremost important term that capacity of parties should be included in agreement. So capacities of parties, for example, the person should be major and he should be sound minded, he should not be unsound of an agreement, he should be uh, 18 plus, uh, that means the party should not below 18 and he should be able to uh, know the agreement which is made between them. So that is come, that will come under capacity of parties. So next legal intention. So there should be a, uh, legal intention between both parties between A and B there should be a legal intention when we are making an agreement when an agreement is made with legal intention the, then uh, the agreement will called as contract for example uh, I will give one, one of the example so you people will get better get into the subject suppose you have ordered a uh, cell phone and so and so website and you pay the 
payment also at the same time but the x website or x party failed to deliver the product to you and they did not repay the money also on this basis there is a consideration between both of you and you and the x party and the consent is you pay the money they will deliver the product is both are existing in action then you can go to and civil court you can have file a case in this case the court will you get judge the ex party that he or she should deliver the product or then re payment the amount which you paid then this uh, judgment made only when contract is when agreement is enforceable by law as the contract the agreement is between you and the website is enforceable by law as there is a consideration and lawful object and both of you both of you have free consent and there is a legal intention in terms and condition they will give clear cut information that what is what uh, what is what for so this is an example friends for you to please better understand so there are the different contracts we go on in our daily life Uh, hope you got clear about the law of contract and the introduction part of uh, indian contract act 1872 uh, if any uh, grammatical mistakes mistakes are any corrections in this please make it uh, the people who are watching my channel thank you so much uh, for subscribing my channel the subscription and the likes you which you give to me will make me so much encouragement to do uh, different types of videos and this from this maximum my classes will be in english as many of my viewers students are requesting sir you please go through with english uh, so it will be useful for me in future so i am going to start this legal classes in english if any requirement in telugu or any other languages i am ready to you another video in the same topic or any other topic you please comment okay friends so hope you all got clear about law of contract and the introduction part of contract act soon we will discuss about uh, different topics there are uh, most of the cases in contract that is uh, regarding free consent and capacity of parties this both will play a main role in the contract so next the student who are going to write the exams they should uh, keep in mind that there is a term which is called kafam square kafam square is very mandatory for an agreement or an contract kafam square stands for consideration undue free consent misrepresentation if this four are not existing in any contract that then contract or in any agreement then the agreement is not called as contract hope you got clear that all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contracts so prati ok contract agreement also then prati agreement to contract call they do so this is today friends that's all for today so thanks for watching my channel and the next day if you like the video please give me one like if you think that this video is very useful to others then please share my channel thank you